Good evening and welcome to our service of evening prayer. Let my prayer be set forth in your sight as incense, the lifting up of my hands as the evening sacrifice. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy upon you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Let us say together the first Hilaron. O gracious light, pure brightness of the ever-living Father in heaven, O Jesus Christ, holy and blessed, now as we come to the setting of the sun and our eyes behold the vesper light, we sing your praises, O God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. You are worthy at all times to be praised by happy voices, O Son of God, O giver of life, and to be glorified through all the worlds. This evening's psalm is Psalm 74. O God, why have you utterly cast us off? Why is your wrath so hot against the sheep of your pasture? Remember your congregation that you purchased long ago, the tribe you redeemed to be your inheritance, and Mount Zion where you dwell. Turn your steps toward the endless ruins, the enemy has laid waste everything in your sanctuary. Your adversaries roared in your holy place. They set up their banners as tokens of victory. They were like men coming up with axes to a grove of trees. They broke down all your carved work with hatchets and hammers. They set fire to your holy place. They defiled the dwelling place of your name and raised it to the ground. They said to themselves, let us destroy them altogether. They burned down all the meeting places of God in the land. There is no sign for us to see. There is no prophet left. There is not one among us who knows how long. How long, O oh God, will the adversary scoff? Will the enemy blaspheme your name forever? Why do you draw back your hand? Why is your right hand hidden in your bosom? Yet God is my king from ancient times, victorious in the midst of the earth. You divided the sea by your might and shattered the heads of the dragons upon the waters. You crushed the heads of Leviathan and gave him to the people of the desert for food. You split open spring and torrent. You dried up ever flowing rivers. Yours is the day, yours also the night. You established the moon and the sun. You fixed all the boundaries of the earth. 
you made both summer and winter. Remember, O Lord, how the enemy scoffed, how a foolish people despised your name. Do not hand over the life of your dove to wild beasts. Never forget the lives of your poor. Look upon your covenant. The dark places of the earth are haunts of violence. Let not the oppressed turn away ashamed. Let the poor and needy praise your name. Arise, O God, maintain your cause. Remember how fools revile you all day long. Forget not the clamor of your adversaries, the unending tumult of those who rise up against you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Gospel according to St. Luke. Jesus said to his adversaries, What is the kingdom of God like? And to what shall I compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his garden, and it grew and became a tree, and the birds of the air made nests in its branches. And he said again, To what shall I compare the kingdom of God? It is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of flour, till it was all leavened. He went on his way through the towns and villages, teaching and journeying towards Jerusalem. And someone said to him, Lord, will those who are saved be few? And he said to them, Strive to enter by the narrow door, for many, I tell you, will seek to enter and will not be able. When once the householder has risen up and shut the door, you will begin to stand outside and to knock at the door, saying, Lord, open to us. He will answer you, I do not know where you come from. Then you will begin to say, We ate and drank in your presence, and you taught in our streets. But he will say, I tell you, I do not know where you come from. Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. There you will weep and gnash your teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all the prophets in the kingdom of God and you yourselves thrust out. And men will come from east and west and from north and south and sit at table in the kingdom of God. And behold, some are last who will be first and some are first who will be last. Here ends the lesson. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed, which a man planted in the ground, the tiniest of all seeds, about as big as a period in 12 point times New Roman, little tiny, which grows into a tree big enough to house the birds of the air. Or the kingdom of God is like a measure of leaven that a woman mixed with flour that changes all the flour and causes it to swell and grow. This is what the kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of God came to ancient Israel in the first century, it came to ancient Palestine in the first century with the birth of Christ. Christ is the kingdom of God. Christ is the kingdom of heaven. When he said to those around him, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand, he wasn't talking about this future event which might or might not happen over the course of the next however many days or weeks or years. He was talking about himself. Christ is what Origen of Alexandria called the autobasalius. He in himself is the kingdom, brings about the kingdom. And so there are some who listen to him. There are some in the streets of Jerusalem where he taught, who listened to him. There are some who hear his word in the church, who hear his word in scripture and listen to him. And there are others who hear and continues to be, continue to be workers of iniquity, 
workers of injustice, workers of unkindness, workers of impatience, workers of violence, workers of division, workers of strife. It's incumbent upon all of us not merely to acknowledge the kingdom of God, say like, oh, it's good that it's here, but to actually become citizens of the kingdom of God. So what is it to be the citizen of a kingdom? So a king is someone who has his power actually from the people. So to be the citizen of a kingdom, to be subjects of a king, this just means that you acknowledge the authority of the king, that you acknowledge him as the one whose will you do. So if in a kingdom, all the citizens one day just said, you know what, we're just going to forget about the king. We're just going to ignore the king. Monarchy's over. It's no longer a kingdom. It's dependent on people treating the king as their lord. So those who are citizens of the kingdom of God are those who do the will of God, those who attempt to conform their lives to the model given to us by Christ, who, who attempt to become like unto God through living a life like Christ's. Those who are outside the kingdom don't exist in a different place or a different time. They're those who decide not to do the will of God, not to conform their lives to Christ. So if you want to experience this kingdom of God, here and now it looks like a mustard seed. Here and now it looks like a little act of patience towards someone you find annoying or tedious or you disagree with. It's a little act of kindness to someone who is hungry, who is thirsty, who is naked, who needs your help, who is sick, who is alone. It's a little act of forgiveness to someone who has hurt you, who has disagreed with you, who has mocked you. It's a little act of peacemaking. It's a little act of bringing joy to someone's life. It's a little act of goodness. And it looks like a little tiny bit of leaven or a little tiny mustard seed. But over time, it starts to create and shape the reality around it. Over time, it starts to grow bigger and bigger and bigger and have snowball-like effects. And then in eternity, it is the kingdom of God. Doing God's will here on earth brings us closer and closer to the fullness of the kingdom. So we are to live as though we already lived in the kingdom of God, in the kingdom of heaven, here and now, through doing his will. Let us say together the Magnificat. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in their conceit. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent away empty. He has come to the help of his servant Israel for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. 
and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. Almighty and merciful God, it is only by your gift that your faithful people offer you true and laudable service. Grant that we may run without stumbling to obtain your heavenly promises through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Most holy God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to us, your servants, that peace which the world cannot give, so that our minds may be fixed on the doing of your will, and that we, being delivered from the fear of all enemies, may live in peace and quietness through the mercies of Christ Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Keep watch, dear Lord, with those who work or watch or weep this night, and give your angels charge over those who sleep. Tend the sick, Lord Christ, give rest to the weary, bless the dying, soothe the suffering, pity the afflicted, shield the joyous, and all for your love's sake. Amen. At this time, I would invite your prayers of intercession and thanksgiving. I pray for Constance Shadwick, for Jan Heritz von der Ninde, for Jean von Hollerick, for Drew Atherton, for Nancy Gaines, for Stanley Sohaski, for Melissa, for Dana Zink, for Adolf, for Howard McKinney Jr., for Celia Bazemore, for Judy Murphy, for Jenny Herbert and the Herbert family, for Jay Silveris, for Ralph Weimer, for Kevin Ross and the Ross family, for David Newton. And I pray for the repose of the soul of Phyllis Ross, Sister Anne Marie, Veda Webster, Carl Baysmore, Ralph Lucas, and the Right Reverend William Fry. May they rest in peace and rise in glory. Let us say together, Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. 
and you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Thank you for joining me for evening prayer. God bless you and have a good evening.